Bitcoin about to melt faces in a good way or in a bad way. This video, we are going to delve right into what it is that you need to know. And if you didn't watch these two videos, go check them out. I'll leave them pinned up in the cards above for you. Very important stuff. Urgent. What is going on here? Very simple. All right. So with the FUD that continues in the space, okay, because Telegram is free speech. All right. We're looking at Telegram found, founder, uh, Pavel, who was Pavel Dorov, who was released on bail two days ago, but will face a couple things. I'm going to have a look at that in a little moment. But essentially, there have been a number of crimes that have apparently been uh, forced on Pavel because his platform allows the creation of pretty much everything uh, in the digital and crypto space. It allows people to make money, trade, and he's being told that uh, he's going to be held accountable for what people like you and I that use Telegram actually do on Telegram, which is a bunch of bullshit. Okay, if you think so, let me know down in the comments below. But the CEO was charged for a number of things. The owner of a social media platform is held liable for the actions of its users. But that's exactly what has happened to the founder of the messaging app Telegram. French authorities have charged Pavel Durov, accusing him of allowing criminal activity on Telegram, although he has avoided jail with a 5 million euro bail. The Russian-born billionaire, who has French citizenship, was arrested last week on suspicion of failing to act against some of the darkest corners of the web, including child sexual abuse, drug trafficking and fraud. Telegram insists it is abiding by European laws. It said, it is absurd to claim that a platform or its owner are responsible for abuse of that platform. Durov has defended... Precisely. And there within lies the answer. How can the owner of the platform be held responsible? How do you, re you can't restrict those things. How do you restrict those things? You don't know who's doing what trafficking, what drug transfer, none of that stuff. And this is why all of these free speech platforms like Telegram, X, Rumble, and the others are all being fired shots at. But interestingly so, not so much X, right? But did Telegram's commitment to free speech and minimal moderation. And fellow social media owner Elon Musk has even chimed in, joking on X that it's 2030 in Europe and you're being executed for liking a meme. But Telegram has always been closely watched by law enforcement worldwide. It has previously been accused of being a playground for terrorists, drug dealers, arms traffickers and extremists. And after the tragic stabbings in Southport in the UK recently, Telegram channels were used to mobilise rioters, leading to violence and property destruction, including attacks on a mosque. Telegram has since shut down the worst offending channels, including one with over 13,000 members. It says it allows peaceful expression, but strictly forbids calls to violence. The app reportedly only has around 50 employees, a stark contrast to Meta's army of 15,000 content moderators used to police Facebook and Instagram. The fight continues, like I said. And they will continue to try and press people like this. A 5 million euro bail. That is fucking ludicrous. Ridiculous. Considering the man didn't even do anything himself. But he is also saying that they do not accept a cause for violence. So if there's anything like that, it is snuffed out immediately. But there is no follow through and there is no justification for his arrest for him pay, having to pay bail on behalf of everybody else like what the heck is going on okay anyways so all i want to share with you today is welcome back to that crypto bliss show truly appreciate you being here here i am on twitter as well right now we can see that we have had massive massive blood on the streets in the last few days with about 175.6 million uh, of Bitcoin ETF flows, outflows. So that is massive, okay, considering what's been happening. But if we take a little bit of a closer look, you can see the inflows carry on on quite a substantial amount of, of days versus out days of outflows. You can see here that the outflows happen for very few days and then the inflows happen tremendously. So now ever since we I mean, this was where everybody bought the top, right? Literally the $74,000.
This is where all uh, the highest inflows came in, was all the way up to the top. So before, while we see this downtrending volume here, we can also see at the same time an uptrend in volume in the uh, sell pressure, the outflow pressure. In other words, the sell pressure is diminishing and the buy pressure is diminishing and it's going to come to a point where it's very likely getting ready to absolutely explode. The question is, is which direction? Is it going to go up or is it going to go down? You let me know down in the comments below. But if we look at GBTC, they had a negative 1,184 outflows. ARC also had 1,096 outflows, BitB 277, and BlackRock with absolutely zero outflows. BlackRock have not sold one of their Bitcoins. And they're not going to sell any of their Bitcoins, but their people might sell Bitcoin. So you can see here that the total net BTC flows to the ETF have just increased over time. The daily uh, ETF inflows fluctuates. It's the same thing as volatility. With time, the inflows become more, but with uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, it's just volatile. That is just what it is. And you can't help but experience the fact that we are currently in a very, very strong bull flag pattern. Even though we've got this level here, uh, which we closed all of our candles above, and then this deeper level here, which is actually a broadening um, megaphone pattern with the RSI on the bottom, the MACD on the bottom, getting ready to make its next move. What do you believe the next move will be down below? Make sure to stay right to the very end of the video and I'll tell you where. All right. So before we carry on, if you look at the cycle flows and if you watched my video here, these two videos here, you would know that actually that actually the moving averages are quite important to understand that even though on the weekly we're kind of having a little bit of a bounce over here that's almost like this little bounce over here right it's very very insignificant then you have a next bounce up and retest once again because you get pushed out of the market and then you carry on i'm only looking from the perspective of the moving averages i'm not looking at anything else on this chart and so you can see here we bounced once, twice, we retested and reclaimed that 50 moving average. And we are now in the shorter time frame, right above this zone here, which is holding us above that 50 moving average, telling us that we are looking absolutely, who knows? I don't know. Do you know? With the fact that, with the fact that you can see here that this is normal where you see pullbacks before massive rallies and just in all all idea right to the top there took us in fact let's do this properly because right from the breakout and the retest here right to the top here is an estimated 530 days bars that's what i've been saying to you on my charts for so long and that was a 733 percent increase we haven't even broken out of it yet and so if we were to essentially come from this level and get to a 730%, even, even just say we get 300% returns in this cycle, that will take us to an estimation of about $272,000 Bitcoin. My personal call for Bitcoin is a $100,000 Bitcoin. What is yours? Let me know down below. But in yeah. early 2026 well, i wonder why that would happen because what it is that i'm about to show you could actually tell you the answers so bitcoin next halving is still an immense 1388 days away because we've recently just had our halving the fear and greed index is currently sitting at about 29 today yesterday was at 34 last work was last week was about 56 now, the very interesting thing is, is that we've been down in the fear value for an immense amount of time. And usually people like Warren Buffett and so on, very incredible, feasible best investors tell us that actually it is a good time to buy when the market is, when it's blood on the streets, the fear is at its, high, at its highest, in other words, it's high in fear, but low on this chart. 
and uh, sell when it's up here. It's as very simple as that. So <clears throat> over here, you can see that right now we generally have, we're in August. We are going into spring officially tomorrow here in South Africa. Well, September. Let's call it September because it's not spring. This is the coldest day that we're actually having here in a very, very long time. It's been boiling. But 2023, September was a green month and that was only about 4%. So the average is about maybe seven odd percent. But if you look at the red days in September, you can actually see that 37% down there, 19 there. And if we took about an 8% down on uh, in September as the average, and you can see that there's more red days down on September, and that's why they call September Red Timber, because actually for like a few years in a row here, six years in a row, it, September was always a red month. Are we going to see the same here or will we create a new blue month, a green month? Let me know down below what your thoughts are. And so essentially you can see here that the average in September is a minus 4.41% as the average and the total is minus 66%. That is the worst month out of all the months in the year, right? So expect there to be blood on the streets. And I have to say to you, because my heart has been bleeding, my portfolio has been bleeding, but I'm not concerned because the coins that I have invested in, and if you have been part of my channel for the last four and a half, nearly five years. I'm an OG in the crypto space. Yes, I haven't been here for many cycles. However, I do know what it is that I'm talking about from a perspective of charting and looking at the cycles that happen within the crypto space. I have been here for one and a half of these cycles already, and I'm still going to be here forever. So at the end of the day, if we're looking at how much Bitcoin you need, when will this market make its next move? Who knows? But generally, as you can see, the best months are actually November, October, then November. So cool. Sit down a little bit in the red. Altcoins will absolutely bleed during this time. And it's altcoins will bleed if Bitcoin drops even 4%, 8%, 10%. Whatever Bitcoin drops, the altcoins will absolutely bleed like crazy. Right now, in 2023, we saw some of the highest returns over the year of 108%. So if you don't believe that Bitcoin literally is giving you more than 100% returns every year, other than the bear cycles, okay? One, two, three, we've had three bear cycles so far as you have seen in the chart, right? Three bear cycles. Here's one, there's the other, and there's the other. Super simple. Okay, so with three bear cycles, the bear cycle, I mean, look at this. 2008 we went down 101%. That's mad. That's like erased everything and it went to zero, but no, it didn't go to zero. It actually increased and continued to go up. But pretty much if you had to average out the Bitcoin, gives you in terms of returns it's a 165 percent return every single year imagine compounding that every single year so you had a million this year now next year you have 2.65 million the following year you now have like 8 million the following year you have about 24 million okay do you see what it is that I'm saying here? You have no idea how much you can compound your wealth with Bitcoin and protect yourself against the world's assets. Uh, well, the dollar printing actually. So 2,572% is the, the total return over the time. Uh, I think it's a little bit more than that. Um, and if you really look here, we're about 80% up to the all time high which currently we're sitting sub 60K at 59K. Currently the month in October is down 8%. So normally, okay, so you can see they're down 8%. So normally you can see here that October, uh, uh, August 
is a bit of a balance between each month and it's ended up being a down month overall all right so the best and the worst months the best months are november april and october the worst months are september august and june we have crossed june tech we have crossed august tech we have not yet come to september which happens to be the worst month so red timber i don't know about you but i hope you've got a little teeny tiny pile or a big pile whatever it is yours you have but a pile of white dry powder waiting to throw it into your best assets when they bleed to death during september red timber okay bitcoin quarterly returns q3 down q2 down q4 mostly mostly green look at it it's never down you see well other than this median okay down a little bit but it's never really down even over the average even over the median bitcoin monthly returns you can see here that september is a blood drawing month and so is march okay so right now btc's price performance quarterly performance monthly performance or weekly performance is not really doing much but btc performance is about to crack a breakout well why is that well i did run a very very strong bull flag and so we have somewhat retested this white line not quite but yes right now we are retesting this area right here which as you can see was a very interesting area and if we zoom in just ever so slightly you can see that we try to reach up here we came down we broke through it we broke back down we broke up we hit it we broke back down we punched through it we pulled back down harder pulled back up and one last rejection off of that area so so far it is a very strong point of rejection if we're coming from the bottom side to the upside but we're not there we're on the top side of this and so therefore with a strong breakout like this we found support here for a few days but we just couldn't get up there and this is when all the ftx bullshit started happening now as you can see we're pretty much at the same support level trying to find consolidate broken up into a new high broken up into a new high to high right now even though we're in a downtrend this is very very bullish so if we were to draw a and i'll leave my flag there but if we were to draw just even this little component out of here but basically if we were to break out of this target the next target is a 100 and 1875 dollars and would you like to see where it is that this comes from well make sure you are subscribed to my channel make sure you are trading with me because you can see i'm in some trades some of them are still bleeding i got stopped out on my freaking solana yesterday lesson learned once again um on those specific trades you have to take profit let the chart take profit put your take profit put your stop loss so even if you're away it's stress becomes stressless in your environment so ha, it's just a matter of time because as you can see here we are going to break out of this pattern, retest the pattern, and then break up to $100,000 because that is the target out of this level. We have reclaimed this level not only once right here, but twice already. It's unlikely we're going to come back down to retest it. We need to make the next move to the upside. So for me, even if we sit in here for a few more weeks and then start to make a move up to a breakout and then break out and retest, sit here for another few weeks, boom, pump up over red timber, it is what it is. And so therefore, within lies the answer that right now we're still in Bitcoin season. Altcoin season has not yet begun. So right now we're still in Bitcoin season. And if Bitcoin continues to bleed and, and yeah, bleed, we're going to experience all of the altcoins bleed. Look at this. This used to be quite green all the way up to about here. So many coins outperforming Bitcoin. But right now you can see that there are very, very few coins that are actually outperforming Bitcoin right now. And so there within lies the answer. 
If they bleed, buy them up. If they don't, then just use your dry powder very cautiously and very, very specially. Thanks for being here on the Crypto Bliss Show. Truly appreciate you. And we'll see you on the next one. Bless the souls.